guys welcome back to two wheel lunatic and in today's video we are going to talk about the royal enfield aftermarket alloys but before that i need to check whether my bike has the battery in it okay so console is working now let me start the bike and i'll be back to you so guys i'm pissed to a whole another level like if just look at this battery is there. So that was the reason I had to start my bike alternately and I failed in doing that. I didn't start the bike since the past 4 days and this is the reason that my battery is now finally dead. So now I'll have to just remove the battery get it charged and yeah. So now uh, let's continue with the topic that we are going to talk about Royal Enfield aftermarket alloys. Now most of the people what they think is like it's cool enough you know to just uh, change the alloys on your Royal Enfield Thunderbird or probably the classic 350, classic 500 Desert Storm or whatsoever model it is the Bullet 350, Bullet 500. I've seen it on most of the classics like such as the 350 and the 500. Most of the people want to change their vinyls and alloys or what whatsoever be it the vinyls or be it the alloys like i just don't get this i mean why do the people need to change these such good alloys i mean this is these are the alloys that the company offers and they know aer aerodynamically uh, they have gone through a lot of research and development and after that they have just made it to a final decision to make such alloys now what happens is most of the people uh, change the alloys thinking that it is cool you know to the change the alloys and uh, the bike will look good and stuff but i just don't get this because the thing is uh, uh, two days ago or a week ago i saw an article on google so in that article a man changed the alloys on his uh, classic 350 i suppose it was a 350 or 500 just don't remember but he changed his alloys and what resulted in changing his alloys was that he came with a fatal accident he met with a fatal accident he was riding at a speed of 50 or 60 and as you can see the image on the screen like his alloy just broke away i mean what the hell i mean why do the people once again i'm speaking the same thing again and again that why do people need to change such good alloys so his alloy like finally broke away and then the bike i don't know then what did he do with the bike so all I want to say is there are a lot of different types of good companies that also manufacture Royal Enfield alloys and if you want to change it then you should go for a better company not just those companies in the market that you get like they'll change your alloy for 2000 or 10,000 rupees and then you will just at the end you will result in a fatal accident. So this video's motive was just to make you guys understand that please if you are watching this video and if you are a Royal Enfield owner or probably any other bike you own please never change the alloys on your bike because these alloys have been researched and developed by the, your own bike manufacturer and they know what's good and what's bad about their own bike and that is the reason they make such good alloys and these alloys won't ever ever lead into a fatal accident unless they have been rusted and the bike is too old like 10 to 15 years old and you haven't changed the alloys that might be bad but if your bike is new, like 2 to 5 years is the maximum the time you can keep the alloys and if you want to change your alloys and change it after 5 to 6 years, but they should be the original alloys. So guys, thank you for watching this video. This video was not any how-to, any do-it-yourself stuff. This video was just about uh, letting you guys know that how to not change the alloys on your Royal Enfield. So thank you for watching this video guys. I'll be seeing you in the next video. And... Till then, stay tuned, I'll have to charge my bike's battery and I'll see you guys in a while. Bye. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.